Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my updated list for the top 10 best EDC folding knives ever. I have uploaded a lot of content on YouTube, about 3,000 uploads, and I have handled a lot of knives. Uh, believe me when I say that there are so many knives that could make a top 10 list. Honestly, I could I could make a top 100 list, which maybe I'll do someday. But for today, I'm going to leave it at a top 10 video with a few alternatives. We're going to be moving very quickly here, and these are in order, which means number one is, in my opinion, the best of all time. So starting off here with number 10, that's going to be the QSP Penguin. This is, uh, simply put, one of the most recommendable knives in existence. This is Micarta and D2 coming in at a fantastic $32. I have given away more of these knives than I can even remember, honestly. Uh, it has fantastic action, very easy to actuate. It's got an awesome pocket clip. It's just a wonderful knife. For a lot of people, they're going to stop right here. This is the knife. It's incredible. It comes in a bunch of different forms. If you don't like the base form, they make a bajillion different versions of it. So pick up the one you want. I'll have as many different versions of, as I can listed down in the description. Moving on here to number nine. I think this is one of the most underrated knives as of 2023. And that's the Spyderco Sage 5, both in the G10 carbon fiber laminate and the lightweight injection mold plastic. Both versions come in S30V. These are a little more pricey. Uh, the lightweight version is $148. The G10 laminate carbon fiber version is $196 as of right now. These are wonderful. It's everything that you love about Spyderco, the compression lock, the opening hole, the leaf-shaped blade. It's just all nice and neat in one thin, compact package. If you're new to Spyderco knives and you're looking at it and thinking, that looks so weird, I don't know if I could let... I thought the same thing. But once you start carrying one of these and using it, Oh my goodness, it's just fantastic. It's very easy to manipulate with either hand. I honestly cannot recommend this thing enough. It's absolutely fantastic. Moving on here to number eight, and this is gonna be another obvious one. That's the Hogue Deca. This is the version two, the newest one. Hogue has done an amazing job in general, US made. Uh, you can get these in CPM 20 CV and Magna Cut in G10 and an absolutely wonderful heat treat for $166, which is truly amazing. I like this thing head and shoulders over the bug out, but the bug out is a good alternative and so is the 940. If I don't at least mention those knives on this list, people get upset. They're honestly good you know, alternatives, but this is better at $166. It also comes in a couple of different blade shapes and lots of different G10 colors, lots of different you know, uh, like, like coatings and finishes and things like that. It's just overall amazing. Really, really good stuff. Can't recommend the Hogue Deca V2 enough. Moving on here to number seven. I have a, a bunch of knives to show. I'm kind of cheating here. This is the CJRB Pyrite. These are the steel versions. These are button locks coming in AR, RPM 9, and steel. You can also get these things in G10 if you don't want the extra weight of the steel. These are button locks and probably the best example of a budget button lock on the market. Whether you like the thumb start or the opening hole, I prefer the opening hole more. Sometimes these are out of stock, don't worry, they come back in stock. These bad boys come in at 50 bucks, which is incredible. These are absolutely fantastic EDC folding knives. Uh, whether you are right or left-handed carry, you can see it's mountable left to right-handed. Manipulating it um, with the left hand is very, very simple. Lots of different colors, lots of different variations. You can even spend more money and get a more expensive version of it in more premium materials. But honestly, just going with the standard budget versions at 50 bucks is <laughs> that is the way to go. But listen, if we're going to talk about budget button locks, this is where I'm going to cheat and give you guys a whole bunch of alternatives here. I mean, I, I can't not mention... Um, the Sencut Saxi, I can't not mention the Sencut Crowley, right, which is in D2, this is in 9CR 18MOV, uh, the Civivi uh, Elementum button lock, also another excellent one, and also if you want to spend a little bit more money, the Civivi Chevalier, it's really hard here because there are so many good budget button locks, but honestly, all of these are great alternatives and you can't go wrong with any of them. If you're just looking for a good budget button lock knife, you're essentially looking at the best ones on the table. Moving on here 
to number six, we're going to go back into an expensive one. Uh, I can't complete this list without putting an OTF on the list. And honestly, there's a lot of good ones. A good alternative to this, of course, is the Microtech Ultratech. You could also say the Axial Shift um, or even the Kershaw Livewire. Those are all excellent knives. But the one that I think is the best in terms of an EDC OTF automatic is, of course, the Guardian Tactical Recon 35. Why? I think the size and just the overall feel of it is the best, but also it has the easiest to actuate switch because it runs on bearings. I've been saying this for years. These come in LMAX, and the one you're seeing here is in carbon fiber and aluminum, but the standard ones come in aluminum. USA made, coming in at $285, which is very, very competitive. These are excellent. They come in a wide variety of different colors. Uh, different blade finishes, different blade shapes. You can give, even get a dagger blade if you want. The, the biggest limitation here is that automatic knives are not legal everywhere. Very good, very high quality OTF. Moving on, uh, number five is the Cold Steel American Lawman. Uh, this thing, despite its name being uh, the American Lawman, it's actually made in Taiwan, which is totally fine. Uh, Cold Steel's Taiwan manufacturing has always been great. Uh, this guy is S35VN and G10 and sports the triad lock. The ergonomic lines of this, and just generally speaking, if you're looking for more of a workhorse knife, this is it, right? If you don't wanna carry a fixed blade and you wanna carry a folding knife that's just really, really strong, the Cold Steel American Lawman is the way to go. That, that triad lock, as much as I joke about it, is obviously an extremely strong lock. Very versatile CPM uh, S35 EN steel, which is stainless, very tough, very easy to sharpen and touch up and just holds a really great edge. The American Lawman has been an excellent knife for a very, very long time. And while it definitely used to be cheaper, I think I remember these things coming in at 75, 80 bucks years ago. 110 is about what I'm seeing them now, and it's not bad, especially considering this is a knife that you could buy and use for the rest of your life. The American Lawman is absolutely still recommendable uh, as a top 10 best ever knife in 2023. Moving on here to number four, and it has to be the Spyderco Para 3. I still like this thing more than the Sage 5. I think the base versions, right, whether we're talking about the lightweight or the G10 version are a little bit better uh, than the Sage 5. Um, the uh, And of course, uh, you know, I, I can't not include the Spyderco PM2. It's just bigger. It just comes down to preference. You're going to pay more money for the PM2. The standard version of the, obviously the version that you're seeing here is not standard. This is my Maximate and uh, aftermarket skinny scale version. But the standard version of the Spyderco Para 3, which is made in the United States, by the way, comes in G10 and S45VN, now for $175, which is a lot more than they used to go for, right? Understandable, inflation, etc. Or you can get the lightweight version, which comes in, I believe, at about $124, which is pretty good. Comes in uh, BD1 steel, which is not... Anywhere near as good as S45VN in my book, but it's still just fine. This is still an excellent option. And again, the Spyderco Para 3 is another great example of how their injection mold plastic feels way more solid than, for example, the injection mold plastic that comes on the Benchmade Bug Out, which feels like if you sneeze, it might disintegrate. Honestly, I think the best steel for this is the S45VN version. Pretty pricey at 175 but again, if you're looking for a one-and-done pocket knife, the Para 3 or the PM2. Moving on here to number three. Uh, and uh, this is a new one for me. This is a new one on this list, but oh my goodness. Let's do the TRM or Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom and I'm gonna throw the Neutron in there because it's essentially the same thing, but smaller. These can be hard to get, but they have been coming back in stock periodically. And as far as I know, they plan to make more. So don't come after me if they're not in stock right now. You just gotta keep checking. I'll make sure they're linked down below. Wow, these are excellent. Honestly, the only bad thing about these knives is that they're not really friendly for lefties. They don't have a mounting position for left-handed people. These are made in the United States. You are looking at an absolutely maxed out diamond textured titanium TRM Atom. And these are expensive, but the base versions of these, both this and the Neutron, are actually in the low 200s. I think the, the, the Neutron comes in at like 200 for flat G10. One of the coolest things about this is that uh, switching out the scales or customizing it is super easy thanks to the way that it's constructed and they offer lots of different versions of the scales on their website. The blade is beautifully thin, runs on washers, and it's just an absolute joy to manipulate. I've actually got an O-ring, which you can find on their website, on the stud here. Uh, the liner lock, access to the liner lock is wonderful. The ergonomics are just 
absolutely stunning. I mean, it's such an easy knife to use day to day. That blade will slice through anything. It is beautifully thin. I didn't use to understand, you know, why people wanted to carry a knife that felt so dainty and so thin. But then you use it and you realize, oh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if you're cutting through, you know, like cardboard that would house a refrigerator, something super thick or styrofoam, rubber, whatever. These blades carve through this stuff. CPM 20 CV. So really, truly everything American made. These are on the pricier side. You're going to spend, uh, especially for the titanium, you're going to spend at least $360, maybe $365 for contoured um, plain titanium or up to $385 for the textured titanium. But if you don't need that, which you truthfully don't, go with the G10 versions. They're spectacular. Moving on here to number two. You guys knew this was going to be on the list. It's been on the list forever. That's the... Ritter Hogue RSK MK1 G2, and I'll also throw in the Mini. Where do you get this knife? It is a Knife Works exclusive. If you are new, that means you cannot get it anywhere outside of Knife Works. I will link it down below. Hogue does an excellent job with overall quality control, fit and finish, and pricing considering they are made in the United States. This is the Benchmade Griptilian, but way better. This has been a number one on my list forever. In fact, I've always talked about the Ritter Hogue being the point of diminishing returns when it comes to, you know, cost to utility ratio, right? Excellent blade, excellent steel, and more importantly, Hogue does an amazing heat treat. They even offer these periodically, or they're going to, in MagnaCut, which is really, really cool. That comes down to preference, right? You can get these in carbon fiber, G10. You can get the mini ones in orange, and you can get them in a black blade, right? I think the most amazing thing is even considering inflation and the fact that these are made in the United States, they come in at an excellent, truly excellent price, $149 for the mini or $169 for the larger one, which you're seeing here in G10. Now, I don't want to sit here and say that the Benchmade Griptilian is not a good buy. It definitely is, especially if you want to customize it. If you're thinking, I want that style of knife, but I want to customize it, go with the Griptilian because you have way way more options. Outside of the geometry of the blade, you're really not going to notice that much of a difference. So the Griptilian is absolutely still a recommendable knife, but the one that I'm going to recommend the most is still going to be the Ritter Hogue. And then finally, in my opinion, the greatest EDC folding knife of all time, absolutely, is going to be the Demco AD 20.5. These come in three different sort of tiers. You have the base tier at $150, which is injection mold plastic and OS 10. And honestly, I'm going to pretend that version doesn't even exist because that it just doesn't make sense to me. 100%, the versions you should be looking at are the G10 and S35 VN variants, which come at uh, start at $249. These are made in Taiwan, by the way or these titanium variants, which are either smooth or textured titanium, and then uh, a CPM 3V blade. They come in shark's foot, which is what you're seeing here, or the drop point blades. Why are these so good? The shark lock. This is essentially a triad lock that is a billion times easier to manipulate. This is invented or th these were designed and invented by Andrew Demko, who is the exact person behind the triad lock. The contact points, the idea with the locking system is the same, but it slides backwards instead of you having to sort of push down and operate it like a traditional back lock or spine lock, right? This makes it beautifully simple to manipulate whether you are left-handed or right-handed. We have pocket clips that are that will, I think if you ask, or maybe the 8020.5s now come with lefty clips. Absolutely amazing. I have beat the crap out of both of these knives. They are absolutely users. They're not knives that are, you know, <laughs> babied, right? The titanium ones are definitely more expensive at, I think, $315 for the smooth version or $375 for the textured. Honestly, just go for the, go for the smooth unless you really want the textured ones. Absolutely amazing. I think the S35VN versions are honestly the best buys right now. You're going to get essentially the exact same strength, the exact same capabilities, but with a blade steel that is, you know, not quite as tough as 3V, but also stainless, making it incredibly versatile. This is a knife that will outlive most people. The strength of the lock is absolutely insane. The overall, just uh, the utility of this knife is incredible. It really is like the most accommodating knife, whether you're left-handed, right-handed, because of the size, right? The weight, the fact that it's not really an overly thick knife, 
The 8020.5, simply put, in my opinion, is the best EDC folding knife that has ever existed. I did this as fast as I possibly could, faster, I think, than I normally do, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found what you were looking for. Like I said, everything will be listed or linked right down in the description so that you can go and check them out. Thanks so much for watching. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody, and have a great day.